So I begin and I encourage you to dispose yourselves in prayer as we read the Gospel according to Matthew. The Lord be with you. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus received this news, He withdrew by boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But the crowds heard of this and, leaving the towns, went after Him on foot. So as He stepped ashore, He saw a large crowd, and He took pity on them and healed their sick. When evening came, the disciples went to Him and said, this is a lonely place, and time has slipped by, so send the people away, and they can go to the villages to buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, There is no need for them to go. Give them something to eat yourselves. But they answered, All we have with us is five loaves and two fish. So he said, Bring them here to me. He gave orders that the people were to sit down on the grass. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, raised his eyes to heaven, and said the blessing. And breaking the loaves, he handed them to his disciples, who gave them to the crowds. They all ate as much as they wanted, and they collected the scraps left over twelve baskets full. Now, about 5,000 men had eaten, to say nothing of women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, a good afternoon to all of you. This Gospel is very inspiring for me personally. You know why? Because for so long, and I will tell you later on why, I did not celebrate Mass during COVID time because I joined our parish in our online Mass for a reason. And, for that, and when that moment came, for my first Mass again, more like my resurrection, this is the Gospel for that Sunday. And while I was reading it, really, literally preparing for my homily, the Gospel speaks to me because it really speaks of the experience I went through. And that is why I will be sharing with you some pointers coming from the Gospel. I am a parish priest at Santissima Trinidad. Before becoming a parish priest, I was with San Carlos Seminary. I became spiritual director at the Philosophy First. And then later on, they moved me to the Theology Department. Presently, I'm still teaching in the seminary, but because of our situation, classes will be online. Now for our reflection. When Jesus received this news, He withdrew by boat. That would be my first point. He withdrew by boat. What is this withdrawing telling us? I experienced this withdrawal. When I got COVID, I need to withdraw. And when you say withdraw, you have to drop, you have to leave everything behind. And literally, I left everything I withdrew. Withdrawing from a big world, withdrawing from a noisy world, withdrawing from an active world. I have to withdraw. To withdraw myself and confine myself in my small room. People would know me as a very social person, and you would know if you are an extrovert, to be confined in one place, it's such an imprisonment. It's not funny at all. <laughs> Father Rolly would know that. When I was in San Carlos Seminary, even during vacation time, my days are set from Monday to Friday. I am gone out of the seminary because I literally plan for my vacation. One week I will be in Boracay, one week I will be in Bohol, one week I will be somewhere else. And I will go back to the seminary come Friday because I have to celebrate Mass in the parishes on weekends. 
But come Monday, I really have to go out. That is why one Monday or Tuesday during that weekday, when Father Rolly and I, when we saw ourselves at the refectory, his, really, his question was, what are you doing here? Are you sick? I just said, di naman. Nagpapahinga lang. Nagpapahimasmas lang. Mamaya pa flight ko. <laughs> so, I'm really sociable. I'm an extrovert. I love to go out. I love to walk. And even in teaching, I love to stand up. See? I don't want to sitting down. I don't want to sit down. Pagka nakaupo ko, parang hindi gumagana ang utak ko kapag ka nagtuturo. Kailangan nakatindig para dire-diretsyo. No? Well, you know, having this kind of personality, so you'll understand what confinement literally means to me. It's not that easy. It's not that easy to just be by yourself. It's not that easy strolling around the four corners of your little room. No? I couldn't get out, even outside my door, for fear that I will be infecting someone or my staff. I could not get out because of this paranoia, this paranoia of COVID that literally hit me. I have to withdraw. Well, not only from, 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 from doing external things, from doing so many things, to withdraw from being in control. I am so used to be a manager. As a pastor, we are managers. We run a parish. I'm also busy with other ministries. But that being in control, I have to let go because I find myself in need. I found myself not in control, but totally dependent, dependent on so many things. Like the food that I will eat, oh, I cannot decide for myself, or I cannot decide what is delivered, that's your food. Not only with food, even with situations. I cannot be the person that is so active and in charge. At this point, I am literally so dependent, so dependent with the help of others, so dependent with my staff, so dependent with my bishop and with other priests who are helping us. I have to withdraw from the pastoral concerns. I won't be able to celebrate the Eucharist live streamed and I have to stay inside to withdraw from the many plans. In the parish, we're on construction. We're trying to build something. But even that, the following day when I discovered I got COVID, I literally have to send all the workers home. And I felt so bad because they were, they don't know where to get their food. No work, no pay. But I have to send them away because I don't want them to get COVID. But of course, before they went home, I see to it that there are provisions. Each of them I give kilos and kilos of rice, groceries, and I gave them their whole week's salary so that they can have something for their family. But it pains me because I know that one week provision will definitely come to an end and where will they go? But I have to send them home. I need to withdraw. Not my decision, but it happened. And it's there. And I have to live the present moment. COVID. Well, I delivered it in one of my homily. When you say COVID, when you want to go to the etymology of it, co, in Latin, it's together. Vid is videre, to see, to see together. Thus, I see COVID as something that we see, but you are not alone in seeing. Together we see. Together we discover. Together we will know. Thus, an invitation to see through, but not just with your own eyes. 
it is an invitation to have the eyes of Jesus, to see through with faith. And you'll be only, you'll only realize more meanings if you know that you're not alone, that people are journeying with you, that God is journeying with you. And thus this COVID for me is seeing through, not just to see, because when you see, you see at face glance, you see so many things. But when you see through, it's like what Gabriel Marcel said in philosophy, that there is such thing as secondary reflection. You have to reflect deeper. You have to see through what's happening with you, what's happening with life. I didn't question God. I did not ask God, why me? But it's that I need to see through. And I ask the Lord, Lord, give me your eyes so that I be able to see through. I can still remember during our staff meeting when this COVID thing is coming up, I told them, you have to be very, very careful. I don't want any one of us to be infected. In fact, to tell you honestly, during that COVID season, my only destination, parish, TV Maria, San Carlos Seminary. That's it. I was so strict to myself and I was so strict to my parish staff. In fact, I told my staff, if anyone of you will get COVID, buhay ka pa ipakikremate na kita. No? Buhay ka pa ipakikremate na kita. Well, my cook got COVID because he needs to go to the market. He's our frontliner. He needs to go to the market to buy food. He did not know how. He did not know when. He just got it. When he got COVID, well, we don't know that it's COVID. He was just ill with fever. I gave him medicine. The following day, he got well. And he started doing his work because he is such a very responsible man. Sana'y magtrabaho at gustong laging nagtatrabaho. Kuha ka agad ang map, 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 map ka agad. Linis, linis ka agad. Because during the time na may sakit siya, pinabayaan daw nung isang kasama ko at hindi daw marunong maglinis. Eh napakamitikuloso, hindi uubra yung linis nila. Kaya kailangan niya kaagad maglinis. Abi kinahapon na nagkalagnat uli. Eh anong interpretasyon natin? Nako, sabi na nga ba, na ano ka? Ano yun? Na, na, nabinat. Nabinat ka. Dapat hindi ka muna nagtrabaho. Nabinat ka. And then days came... And then, Sunday, sabi niya sa akin nung gabi, Father, ipacheck mo na ako. And that Sunday evening, that's also where I felt the symptoms. Sunday evening, I felt the symptoms. It was Father's Day when like there's a fever, slight fever, but I thought it's normal. Bakit? Eh kasi may pigsa ako noon dito. <laughs> May pigsa ako noon, nag-antibiotic ako, napakasakit ng pagsa dito. Kaya sabi ko, normal magkalagnat. Normal magkalagnat kasi may pigsa ako. Nag-antibiotic na ako noon. Okay? Kaya lang nung hapon, Father's Day, tinrit ako ng staff ko, ng favorite kong may pagkain. Ano yon Isa sa mga favorite. Ramen. So masarap siya na andun sa akin, dinala sa kwarto ko. Nung pagkadala, nag-isolate na ako nung hapon eh. Nung kinakain ko, ang sabi ng utak ko, dapat masarap to ah. Favorite ko nga to eh. So dapat masarap to. It's tasty. Yung pork na ginril na something, yung noodle, may egg, tapos may seaweeds. This should taste good. But I couldn't taste anything. It feels like I'm just, I'm just trying to munch and munch and munch and trying to trying to get, what's the flavor of this? What's the flavor of this? It should taste like this. But I'm not feeling anything. I'm taking food. I'm taking food and I'm able to take food. Ah, nakakabwisit. Busog ka pero hindi ka nasarapan. Alam mo yon. And I wasn't able to finish that food. And that became a big question mark. I like this food. 
This is one of my comfort food. And yet, I couldn't finish it. I said, something's wrong. So, Monday, I'm supposed to take Kuya Omer to the hospital for the swab. I decided also to, to get swabbed. And Monday, Tuesday evening at 10.30, as I'm about to sleep, I checked my email and the result it was already there. So fast. Monday, I took the swab. Tuesday evening, 10.30, nasa akin na. And when I got the result, oh my, I'm positive. I'm positive with COVID. The 10.30 a.m. when I knew that I got COVID, I couldn't sleep at all. It's already 10.30, but I needed to wake up Reverend CJ, my companion deacon. I have to tell him because immediate action needs to be taken for contact tracing. They should know or else virus could spread. And that's, that was my fear. So that night, Reverend CJ called the persons that we encountered and even the following day. But that night, I couldn't sleep. Every hour, I would wake up trying to get good sleep, but I cannot sleep at all. And the big question mark, what will happen to me the following day? Ah, I guess someone will pick me up and brought me to an isolation facility. And I already packed my things. I already packed my things, what things are go, what things. And then I was looking around my room. Oh, this might be the last time I will ever see this room. And so I have to arrange it. Okay? I have to put the things, the documents that will be needed in case. Because you are so afraid with the news that you watch. People are dying all over the world of COVID. And that's a stigma. So I thought I'm going to die. So I prepared. Okay, and all the documents for the church and personal documents, I put it in one bag. So everything is everything is prepared. Because I thought the following day I will be taken somewhere. That night I called the doctor. That night I called Father Jun Abogado, who is very helpful to me. I really disturbed him a lot. Juna Bugado is the Minister for Health of the Archdiocese of Manila. And I was able to talk to a doctor. And the doctor said that um, tonight, just stay in your room. And the following day, let's see what will... Let's see. Okay, so the following day, the doctor just told me, asked me about my symptoms. It's considered mild. And so he said, I need not go out, okay? I have my own restroom. I have my own room. We enjoy a good facility in such a way that we will not be able to infect others. And so I was home quarantined. Kuya Omar was home quarantined too. But three days or two days after, he couldn't breathe. He couldn't breathe that he needed to be taken to the hospital. I think it was past three days. Because of the paranoia, psychological and everything, because, because, because really, because of the body, frail body, he couldn't really breathe. And so even that, I need to decide. So I contacted persons that will accommodate him to the hospital. And the big question mark, how will he be taken to the hospital? How? We need to get an ambulance. We tried, but there's nothing. No, no, no ambulance available. And so one of us should take him. Reverend CJ volunteered. But I said, but Rev, no, I thought of driving. But what can I do? I can just drop him. I cannot get out of the car. What will happen to him? And so somebody fit should drive him. Reverend CJ volunteer. And so the things that we need to put inside the Innova to separate the patient from the driver, we did that. I said, open the window so that air can pass through. Take him to the hospital. Do not talk, do not talk. Do not open your mouth. 
and he was fully covered, Kuya Omris, and he was taken care of. Good thing. Good thing. So he suffered pneumonia. He was put on oxygen. But as he was going out of the room, where side by side he was room at the guest, he was in the guest room. But as he was going, I was crying. I was literally crying from afar. The thought that he will be intubated. The thought, oh my, you will be taken to the hospital. These are the things that happen to people in the hospital with COVID. I really don't know what to feel. But I was just crying, praying, Lord, help him, strengthen him, protect him. He's a good man, a really good man. And he has a family. And the family is crying in Pampanga. Okay? So the, the family in Pampanga is panicking. I was panicking, but I couldn't show that I am panicking. Someone has to be strong. But I was literally crying when he was taken to the hospital. We don't know what will happen. He needs to be withdrawn from us. And that withdrawal is quite painful because we don't know. That could be the last moment I, I could see him. I don't know. Baka isa-isa kami, sunod-sunod na kami. We don't know. We don't know. To withdraw to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. Oh, it was a lonely place. Indeed, it was a lonely place. It was a lonely place even if you try to entertain yourself, walang sasapat. Walang sasapat na entertainment, walang sasapat. Hanggang sa may isang friend ng magandang loob ang sabi, manood ka ng Netflix, wala akong Netflix. Wala akong cable. Naka-TV box lang ako noon. At nangangamba pang magsara. Naka-TV box lang at hindi, hindi naman ako, balita lang ang pinapanood ko sa TV. Well, a friend gave me Netflix account, shared with me their account. Korean telenovela helped me. <laughs> Beginning with crash landing on you. <laughs> and I became so addicted. No? After my prayers, of course, I have time to pray. But you know, I, I finished crash landing on you. I finished the kingdom. I finished, I finished uh, by mama. I finished sky castle. I finished <laughs> terrible. You know? But that helped me survive. That helped me survive. Okay. Well, but still, it was a lonely place. It was a lonely place. What can you do with a small room? Stand, sit. And to tell you honestly, I only lie down once at night. And after that, when I wake up in the morning, never again. The second time that I will go back, it's night time. And so when I wake up, I will already prepare my bed, cover my bed, that's it. I don't sleep in the afternoon. But this time, I found myself sleeping one hour in the afternoon because I got nothing to do. But good thing, group of friends helped me that every 3 p.m. they will call me via messenger because they arrange this prayer group that every 3 p.m. we will pray the chaplet of the divine mercy and then we will pray the holy rosary for the intentions of COVID people with COVID and for the intentions of our country most helpful this is not my initiative but initiative of lay friends. At first, they do not want to include me because it's their way of showing their support. They've been doing this when I got operated twice. During my time of confinement, they would set a particular time and pray together. But this time, they thought of inviting me. 
And I oblige. Aba, nakakahiya naman. Ikaw na pinagdadasal, hindi ka pa makikidasal, di ba? <laughs> so I oblige. So I join them. And it's something beautiful that we meet every day via messenger. That's something beautiful. And in that group, you know, well, it happened that it's not only me who got COVID. Another family and the whole family got COVID too. And so all the more we strengthen our prayer. When everything got well, well, there's this question, should we continue or should we stop? As long as we can, we have to continue. If you're not able to come because of an appointment, because of this and that, then we will still continue. Join us if you, if you can. And that has been the arrangement. So, something beautiful. It was a lonely place. Yeah, I told you that I did not celebrate Mass on my own. Why? Because I want to feel how others are feeling when they are deprived of the Eucharist. I want to feel and to be one with them. And this was a moment for me to be one with the people too. Yes, every day I would put on our live streaming Mass. And I also felt hunger for the Eucharist, most especially in receiving Jesus. And I feel for you, it feels incomplete, really. But I still feel for all, and that brought me into something, my spiritual union with my parishioners. Something beautiful indeed. Something beautiful, now you'll be able to understand that it's such a privilege we priests do have because we can celebrate the Eucharist anytime we want. But a beautiful reminder that that's not a private thing because it is an ecclesial offering, the church praying, the church communing with God. So I go to the next. The crowds heard of this. Leaving the towns went after him on foot. And the crowd heard of Jesus going somewhere, withdrawing somewhere, but the crowds heard it. And the crowds followed the Lord. Now let me point this. The crowds heard this. In the same case, the crowds heard what happened to me. I have to make it public. I am a priest. I feel for you. If you're, not a, if you're not a public figure, you can maintain that privacy. But when you're like a public figure like me, I have to tell it because they need to understand. So we declared that we got ill. We declared that we got COVID. Oh, many newspapers were trying to contact us for in, not interview really, but something to write up. TV networks are phoning us for interview, but all we can say is everything is there. Everything is there, so there's need for us to speak. You just make it juicy. Everything is there. Okay? The crowds heard of it. My parishioners heard of it, and I got positive reactions in such a way that they really helped me. They prayed for me. They prayed for us. The crowds heard of it and they volunteered. They volunteered to send food. They volunteered to send medicines, food supplement. They volunteered and donated for the upkeep of the parish. The crowds heard of it and we felt love. We felt loved. And I'm very thankful, grateful to them, indebted. I don't know how to pay them back. But I told myself, I'll strive to be a good priest. I'll strive to serve more, to love more, to give more. My parishioners did not abandon me. My parishioners were there to help. My parishioners were there Wag lang akong bibisita. Wag lang akong get near them. Of course, because I have the virus. I have the virus. The crowds heard of it. But, of course, it's not all positive. We also heard and felt discriminated. 
felt discriminated when like some of my staff would need to go errand, would have to go somewhere to buy this and that. And you know, some parishioners were like, Oh, wag kang lalapit sa amin, may COVID kayo. Di, wala akong COVID, sila father yun. <laughs> may COVID kayo. When a parishioner would tweet, napakalat-kalat daw ako kahit may sakit akong COVID. Paikot-ikot daw ako, alam ko lang may COVID ako. Hinawa ko raw maraming mga sakristan. Such a false news. But what can I do? I felt hurt. But you just have to remain silent. We were discriminated too. And that was a moment for us, not just to empathize, but to be one. To be one with the many people who were discriminated because of COVID. To be one with the many people who were, who became a different person. And people were so indifferent at them. I felt that. Oh yes, I'm a priest. They have high regard and respect. But given that, eh lalo na yung ordinaryong tao. Lalo na yung ordinaryong pamilya. How were they discriminated? One friend who got COVID told me, Father, ang sakit. Yung kwarto ko katabi ng kali eh. Naririnig ko sila eh. Naririnig ko sila pinagchichismisan nila kami. Naririnig ko sila. Ang sakit. Ang sakit. Napadikit lang sa kotse namin, diring-diri na. Eh, may COVID yan, may COVID yan. Diring-diri na. The crowds heard this. Well, I kept everything in my heart. And the good thing, I joined this particular spirituality of the focolare when we would reflect on Jesu Abandonato, the abandoned Jesus. And it has been a maxim which was repeated so many times. And now it's real to be Jesu Abandonato. How it feels like when Jesus was abandoned, abandoned on the cross. It was an invitation for humility, to really be humble, to really be lowly, to really take the fact, eh may COVID nga kami. Totoo naman. Totoo namang may COVID kami. Totoo namang maaari kaming makahawa. Totoo naman na dapat kaming pangilagan. Tinatanggap na lang namin, eh yun talaga. Kaya, di distansya muna tayo. Ganun talaga. So, as he stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd and he took pity on them and healed their sick. To take pity on them. Upon seeing, he took pity on them. Which drives me to my reflection. I was watching news and it was a moment when a large, a large patient were about to be released. They will go home because they are already cured. I was like cheering for them. I was like telling them, good for you, go home. Be with your loved ones, start your life anew. God has been so good. Go home. You've been waiting for this. And while I was cheering for them, I was crying. I found myself crying. In the past, I was just like reading statistics. Statistics, 25 got cured, 250 got cured, 250 got cured. But now it's different. The feeling is so different. I was, I was, it was a hope for me. It was a sign you were healed. I will get healing too. You were released. I will be released too. And good for you because you are going home. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father Henner sent a viber message and said, Jojo, Jesus has a plan why you got COVID. Because now, your suffering is meaningful. And through this, you will become a better person. 
Which, by the way, Father Henry is the spiritual director of our batch, literally. Literally. And Father Henry has been a good spiritual guide, not just then, but until now. Until now. And we're just, we're just blessed to have that kind of guidance, to have that kind of priest, to have that kind of friend. And so indeed, it's an invitation for me to really be one with the many COVID patients. That is why at the back of my mind, when I get well, I will do this, I will do that. And to heed what Bishop Abilio said, to take care of families with COVID. And when we hear that this got infected, that this family is being quarantined, then it should not be a topic for gossiping, but a moment to empathize, to sympathize, to attend and care for their needs. Jesus took pity, but His pity is not just a glance or a wishful thinking, kawawa naman kayo, sana, sana, sana bumuti kayo, sana umayos kayo. No. His was pity with action. Awang may gawa. Awa, nakitang awa at responding concretely. And he saw them hungry. And he feels so bad. He pitied them. Gutom na gutom sila. Kaya concretely, nagtanong siya, anong ipapakain natin sa kanila? Anong ipapakain natin sa kanila? Pero ano ang sagot ng mga disipulo? Pauwiin nyo na po. Hindi kayang pakainin yan. Pauwiin nyo na. Send the people away. Send the people away. It's familiar. When someone in our community got COVID, anong ginagawa niyan dyan? Dapat in-isolate yan. Anong ginagawa niyan dyan? Dapat nandun yan. Makaka-infect yan eh. Send them away. And it was easy for non-COVID to send them away. Send them away. Oh, eh. Sometimes you have to understand then why. Bakit naman talaga? Pwede naman talaga dapat send them away. Baka nga maka-infect. Pero ganun-ganun ka agad? Di ba muna kamustahin? Di ba muna alamin ang kalagayan? Eh, husto naman sa pagsatay. Dapat paalisin yan, palayasin yan. Wala namang tutulong. Yung, yung dadak ng dadak na palayasin yan, di naman nag-isip sa kaya sila dapat pumunta. Dapat kontakin natin yung, yung araulyo, tumatanggap daw ng ganito. Yung mga ganito, tumatanggap daw yung isolation facilities. Hanapan natin sila for their own good at for the good of their family. Wala namang ganun eh. Dismissive attitude lang eh. Send them away, palayasin yan dito. Mahawa tayo niyan. The reflection of Bishop Pabilio. Many would do, like you have a leper. When, when you got leper, wow, you're isolated and you live among the dead. And yes, their immediate reaction is to send them away so that they could find, find food for themselves. Send them away. But Jesus did really respond, send them away. Yeah, that's a good idea. No. What Jesus said, there is no need for them to go. No need for them to go. And I ask you, you give them some food yourselves. No? You give them some food yourselves. There's no need for them to go away, but you give them some food yourselves. Sa daming ng lait, sa daming ng chismis, ni kalahating kilo ng bigas hindi naman nagparamdam. Ni pangangamusta, ni card, ni greeting, ni text, wala naman. Pero pandidiri, panlalait, pangdidiskrimina. Husto. What Jesus is telling us is to take care of the least, the last, the lost. And during this time, indeed, the least, the last, and the lost are COVID patients, COVID families. And that we need to attend. If we if we will really take them as part of our community, part of our family, then whenever you eat, you will also take, may kinakain ba sila? 
may pagkain ba sila? Eh hindi sila pwedeng lumabas, hindi sila pwedeng mamalengke, hindi sila pwede to provide for their own needs. Kahit mayaman sila, kahit may pera sila, limitado ang galaw nila. Ha? Ah, please, you need to have a different mindset. This is the invitation of Jesus, don't send them away. But you, do something. Lift your finger to help. Concretize your love. You always declare that you love the Lord. I love the Lord. But he said, whatever you do to the least, it is loving the Lord. And yet we don't love the Lord concretely. And that has been a big problem. The disciples said, but we only have five loaves and two fish. Five loaves and two fish. And we got literally nothing. Nothing. Five loaves and two fish. That's us. So easy to dismiss. That's us. So blinded with the five loaves and two fish. And it feels like, wala. Nothing. Let me tell you. When you get COVID, you'll appreciate the little things that you're taking for granted. So your breathing, it is a fact that you breathe. Even if you're sleeping, you're breathing. And yet, we don't acknowledge it. We don't give praise to God. Lord, thank you, humihinga ako. Lord, thank you, nakakahinga ako. Alam mo ba yung may COVID na malala? Ay kailangan pang magbayad ng mahal na ventilating machine, suksuka ng tubo, butasan dito, makahinga lang ng normal. We take for granted that breathing is something and that we need to thank God for it. We take for granted that even the sense of taste, it's something wonderful and a blessing. Eh tayo, ang nakikita natin pag kumakain tayo, eh sardinas na naman, ay nakayan na naman. Nawawalan tayo ng panlasa kasi yung kinakain natin hindi masarap. Pag may COVID ka, wala kang panlasa para kang kumakain ng buhangin. Kahit anong pilit mong isaksak ng pagkain, nakakaisang subo ka palang ayaw mo na. Pangatlong subo, pilit na pilit magkalaman lang. And we disregard that sense of taste. Kahit huwag kang mag-inarte na hindi masarap ang kinakain mo, pagpasalamat mo may panlasa ka, importante yan ngayon kung may panlasa ka. Kaya kapag ka tumikim ka at may panlasa ka, praise the Lord. To praise and give thanks to God, may panlasa ako. Bit ka nahihiyak, may panlasa ako. Alam mo ba yun ang hinaantay ko nung nagka-COVID ako? Uy, nalalasahan ko na siya. Things that were taken for granted because it was considered, it's a given fact. But those given facts, I realize I have become ungrateful. So ungrateful, I thought I'm entitled to breathe. I thought it's part of my system that I can taste. And there's no need for me to exaggerate and be grateful. Why? Because we thought part of being normal is to enjoy the senses. Huh. True enough. Things got value, persons got value when they are taken away from you. And when it's taken away from you, ah, oh, how you demand, how you plead, Lord, take it back, take it back. Be grateful. And this is what the Lord is teaching the disciples. Don't say there's nothing. Someone offered five loaves and two fish. And we have to be grateful that someone is offering five loaves and two fish. There is something. You're locked down and all you see is that you're locked down. What? You're just locked down? Didn't you see that the most beautiful thing to be locked down is to be with your family? Don't you appreciate your family, your togetherness? Now that you're doing cooking, baking, experimenting things, now you become plantito, plantita? <laughs> Something beautiful that we praise the Lord. And don't take it for granted. So we don't just see that we are locked down. Because there's something greater to see through. Why? 
and to be able to praise and realize, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're good and you loved us true enough. Thank you, Lord. So we don't dismiss the five loaves and two fish wherever we are. When you see it, try to see it through. May makikita at may makikita ka. So Jesus said, bring them here to me. Bring it to the Lord. The five loaves and two fish were brought to the Lord. That's what we need to do. When, us, when Jesus asks us to bring it to me, then we have to, it's a moment to recognize. And we say, praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord, I am well. Praise you, Lord, I can smell. Praise you, Lord, I can taste. Praise you, Lord, I can sleep well. Praise you, Lord. And we go to God praising Him for the goodness that He has done. Five loaves and two fish, when they're brought in front of our Lord, Jesus was able to multiply them. Thus, the Eucharistic acts. He took. He blessed, He broke, He gave. And this is something beautiful. He took, He blessed, He broke, He gave. And Jesus would like us to do the same thing, to bring everything to Him and whatever we give with love, Jesus will bless it. And when Jesus blesses, He multiplies. And you'll see, you yourselves will be able to feed to even a multitude. Yes, even a multitude will be able to feed. And we bring it to our Lord. That is why the invitation is really that our Eucharist become concrete. Yes, I know that you are doing live streaming Mass and it feels like so incomplete because you are not able to commune. There's no communion. But Jesus asked you something. There should be a communion. There should be a communion because Jesus invites you among your neighbors to break bread. And that breaking of bread is literally sharing a half kilo of rice. That sharing of really two or three eggs, one noodle, concretely breaking the bread. <clears throat> That's Eucharist. May not be food, maybe a text, maybe a phone, maybe a message, maybe words that will inspire, give hope, give life. Or simply an acceptance. Nauunawaan namin ang pinagdadaanan ninyo. Kasaysa nyo kami. Hindi kami nandidiri sa inyo. Mahal namin kayo kung anong pangangailangan ninyo, ipaabot nyo lang sa amin. To break bread. And if you do that, you don't tell yourselves, hindi kami nakapag-communion. You deprive yourself of communion. Because you didn't break bread with others. There's no effect of the Eucharist. Now that we are well, now that I am well, that has been a mission, my extra mission, to take care of COVID families. That's why we ask barangays, how many COVID families are there in your barangay? And I appeal for food, for rice, we pack it and then we send it. We need not know their names. But we just want to extend, give something. And that's communion. That is communion. When they all ate, Jesus asked, gather what is left. When you're trying to reflect on that, you're able to feed 5,000 men not counting women and children. Eh, bakit kailangan mo pa ng tira-tira? Bakit kailangan pang kunin yung mga natira? Kailangan. Kasi lahat mahalaga. Kailangan. Sapagkat yan ang paraan 
ng pagtingin ng may pagpapasalamat, hindi nagsasayang. Kaya't kinukuhang muli. And when you think and reflect on this, Bishop Pabilio gave us a beautiful meditation on this. We are the scraps. Tayo yung mga tira-tira. Pero kahit tayo'y tira-tira, ang sabi at utos ng Panginoon, lipunin nyo sila. Lipunin ninyo at ilagay natin sa mga basket at iuwi natin. Sapagkat mapapakinabangan pa yan. Tayo yung dakilang tira-tira. Twelve. It signifies the twelve tribes of Jacob, the twelve tribes of Israel. Wala sa mata ng Diyos na sinasabing tira-tira ka lang, di ka mahalaga. Gaano ka man kaliit, gaano ka man kalaki, mahalaga ka sa Diyos. At iibigin niya na kayong nagkawatak-watak, mga mumo na nagkalat, ay maibalik muli. At si Kristo ang magbubuo. Magbubuo. My COVID experience was indeed an experience of being shattered. Being shattered to mumo. Being shattered. But in that shattering, Jesus asked me, Gather again. Gather again yourself. Gather your experience. Gather what you learn. And you'll see there will be something good that will come out of it. In tumiting kad na mabuting nangyari, now I feel, really feel for those who got COVID, for the families who got COVID. I admit at once when like I would hear that in the street there's a COVID infected person I will tell my staff oh, wag kang dadaan dun, ha, may COVID doon yes yes wag kang mamamalengki doon, may COVID doon yes I was once like that but now I became a different person. I went through that. And I know how it felt. And now that I am here, recovered, it was indeed a grace. I was shattered before, and God put me back. Because God sees value. God sees something. Five loaves and two fish. It's not nothing, it's something, and you'll see, it will do great things. When there was pandemic in the recent times, many priests and sisters got infected. A very close experience when, like I posted, I survived COVID. One friend from Rome, Filipina, gave me a private message and told me, Father, nagka-COVID ka pala. Ako rin. Magaling na ako. Nagpapagaling. She was a sister taking care of elderly. Kilala to ni Father Rolly. Sister Bernie of the Chameleon Order. Sister Bernie was taking care of the elders. Elderly. And it was so heartbreaking for her because in Italy, in their own center, every day there are deaths. There will be people dying each day. And it came that one day there will be five, there will be more deaths every day. And it's breaking her heart until at one point she got infected with COVID and she was confined for two months. And when she recovered, she was given a, or treated with a good vacation. She gave me a picture. She was in, in the beach. Almare. She was in the beach. Sabi ko, wow, sister, swerte, swerte mo. Sabi mo, padre, therapy ko to. Kailangan ko ng hangin mula sa dagat. 
Okay? At sabi ko, ano? Uwi ka na? Di pa, Padre. Dito muna ako. Kailangan pa kami. Pag maayos, magaling na magaling na ako, balik uli sa dati. Can you hear her? She's saying, I suffered a lot and yet I am and I can be infected again by going back to that same ministry of taking care of elderly with COVID. But she said, I will go back. I need to go back. She's been telling me, I want to go back. I want to go back. You ask me, I want to get COVID again. No! Please! Once is enough. But if ever, in the line of duty, in the line of ministry, I'll get COVID again. Why not? If that would mean serving, if that would mean loving, if that would mean saving one's soul, why not? We are priests, and our mission is not self-preservation. We are priests, and we are meant to be servant of God, servant of people. At the end of this COVID season, what will you gain? Sana hindi lang dahil lumaki ka, at lang ang nag-gain mo, no? I hope it's not self-preservation but the willingness to serve. But yes, we have to be prudent. There should be prudence in charity. But still, the willingness to serve. Yes, along the way, some of you will get COVID. But be firm. Have faith. Go back to the gospel I read. Because God's hand will be there to accompany us. That's what I experienced. When I went through it all, I realized the hands of God concretely touching me through my friends through my staff, through the clergy, through my bishop, even to the people that I do not know. But they have known me through live streaming of Masses and TV Maria. I was touched. And that was Jesus telling me, I am with you along the way. I ended COVID with quarantine and literally it was a 40-day journey. And in the biblical sense, 40 is completeness. 40 is a complete moment of purification. 40 is new life. And yes, life begins at 40. Now I begin a new chapter. And with this new chapter of life, the willingness to serve is still there. And I recall, why do you want to become a priest? I will still say, because I want to serve the Lord. Music